So now that we've learned a little bit about the equilibrium constant K and uh, how to manipulate it a little bit, so if we know the value of K for some reactions, we can uh, use properties of the equilibrium constant to perhaps find it for the value for other reactions. But how do we know the value of K to begin with? Well, it turns out that it's a, a quantitative analysis problem. So basically what you have to do is mix together uh, reactants and maybe even some products because the reaction is reversible, and you let that system come to equilibrium at sort of a fixed temperature and pressure, and then you have to go in, and this is where the analytical chemistry comes in, we need to measure the equilibrium concentrations of all the reactants and products. So that may or may not be easy to do, but let's assume that it is, and then what do you do? Well, then it's a simple matter of substituting those equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression. So for example, here we have a reaction between water and carbon monoxide to make hydrogen gas and a carbon dioxide gas. And so at equilibrium, we've measured the molarities. And so we could calculate a uh, K sub C, a concentration-based equilibrium constant. Since these are all gases, but we have the molarities instead of the partial pressures, but we could convert into that if we wanted to. So the equilibrium constant expression then, remember it's products over reactants. So we would need the molarity of H2 raised to the first power because that's the coefficient in front. Then we multiply that by the equilibrium concentration of carbon dioxide, also raised to the first power. And then that gets divided by the reactant. So the equilibrium concentration of water, in this case, not a pure liquid or solid because it's a gas and carbon monoxide, CO, also raised to the first power. So notice that we multiply these terms, we don't add them. All right, so what do we need to do now? We just need to substitute in the numbers. So these square brackets, these symbols, right, they represent equilibrium concentrations, and here we've gone off and measured them. So for H2, we've got uh, 0.0282 times, for carbon dioxide, 0.0182, then for uh, water, it's going to be uh, 0.0118. And for carbon monoxide, it's also 0.0118. And so we just plug all those numbers into our calculator. And uh, when you're done and the dust settles, you'll get 3.69 to three significant figures. So this K is a little bit greater than one, but pretty close, so we would expect that we have sort of relatively equal amounts of reactants and products, and that's kind of what we see. So it maybe slightly favors the products, but, but only slightly. So there's that equilibrium constant. So that's one way that we can determine the value of equilibrium constants. The second way that we can determine the value of equilibrium constants, and this is perhaps a little more common, is to uh, use some stoichiometry. So uh, knowing something about the initial amounts that we put into our reaction, we then let it come to equilibrium, and then all we have to do is measure the equilibrium amount of one substance. So that's an easier analytical problem because it could be that some of the substances, some of the reactants or products, maybe their concentrations are really, really tiny. That can be a challenge to measure trace and ultra trace levels of uh, certain substances. It could be that some things are easier to measure than others. So it's useful if we only have to measure one equilibrium concentration, and then it's pretty easy to measure the initial amounts that you put together we can measure the equilibrium concentration of one substance. Knowing the initial amounts of all the substances then, we can use stoichiometry to calculate what the other concentrations have to be. And so in equilibrium problems, we're gonna use something that's a very useful approach in helping us solve these problems, and it's called the rice table. Uh, some people simply call it an ice table, and uh, this is just an acronym. And so a table, we're gonna have row headings and column headings. The row headings spell out rice, or ice if you leave off the uh, top R, but R stands for reaction, and so the first row, you're gonna list the reaction. Then you have initial, and I put a little asterisk here, so the initial what? So technically a rice table, when you're filling in numbers here, these need to be in terms of moles but you can also substitute any property that's directly proportional to the number of moles of that substance. So molarity works, or partial pressures if we're talking about gases. So you can use either one of those. And sometimes for gases, you can even use volumes, because volumes, through the ideal gas equation, are directly proportional to the uh, number of moles that you have. So anything like that. 
All right, so we're gonna use molarity in this problem. And so the first thing that you do is you list out your balanced chemical reaction. And so here I have that. So H2 plus I2 in equilibrium with two moles of HI. These would all be gas phase um, substances, but we're gonna use molarity instead of partial pressures for these. And so we would be talking about a Kc, a concentration-based equilibrium constant. And so what you see is each reactant and product then becomes the heading of a column in our table. So we've made the rice table. And then we just need to go in and list our initial amounts and you the experimenter get to decide that. So let's say we initially have 0.001 molar moles per liter of hydrogen. We have 0.002 molar or 0.002 moles of I2 per liter. And we don't have any of the HI, the hydrogen iodide. So then we're gonna let this reaction come to equilibrium. So we wait for a little while, maybe we have to heat it up or whatever, we, we get it to some temperature that we wanna measure it at. And then we go in and maybe it's easy to measure the uh, concentration of the HI that's present. Maybe we've got uh, a, a method using spectroscopy where we shine light on the sample and light of a particular wavelength, maybe in the infrared, gets absorbed. And we know from calibration curves how to relate that to the molarity. So we come up with that equilibrium measure. So now what we have to do in our table is we're gonna to need to find these other values right here. And so we're gonna to have to fill in the rest of our table. So this next row in our table is for the change. So how much does it change? Well, for the HI, it's easy to see how much it changed. It went from zero to 0 0.00187. So we can simply say that that change was a positive so notice that the plus sign is here because it's increasing. So if the products are going to increase, then we know that the reactants are gonna to have to decrease. So we're gonna have some minus signs when we go to fill in these blanks. And so we know it increased by 0 0.00187 moles per liter. All right, so that's how we get from zero to this number is we just figure out what the number has to be that goes between those, right? So what does the change have to be? What do you have to add or subtract to get this number? All right, cool, so we figured that out. Now, how do we figure out these other ones? Well, we can use a little bit of stoichiometry to do that. So this first change right here is telling us that we have created 0 0.00187 moles of HI for every liter. Okay, so um, that's just our definition for what molarity is, right? And so now we can use stoichiometry to convert from one substance to another substance when we have a balanced reaction. So we would know that there's, for example, one mole of I2 that reacts for every two moles of HI. So that just comes from the two to one stoichiometry that we see in our balanced reaction. So then moles of HI cancel out and we would then know the molarity or the the molarity of the HI, or the change in the HI. So we know it has to be negative, right, because we have to lose reactants to make products, because we have to conserve mass, right? And so this is gonna be 0 0.00187 divided by two. And so that's gonna be the change that we can then write down in this blank right here. And we can do the same thing for uh, this second blank right here, and we'll get these following numbers, right? So negative, right? The negative sign for both of these. 0 0.00187, so that's our change, right? Divided by two, that just comes from the stoichiometry. Uh, that works out to be these two numbers. And so now all we have to do, since we know the change, we just do the arithmetic down the column. So we just add or subtract these numbers. So this is basically telling us 0 0.001 minus 0 0.00935, and so we do that for both of those. And then boom, we have our equilibrium concentrations. So now the problem is just like the last one I worked, we just have to plug and chug. So we write down our equilibrium constant expression, Kc. It's gonna be the molarity of Hi, squared now because of that coefficient, right? Then we divide that by the equilibrium concentration of H2 times the equilibrium concentration of I2. And we know all of those equilibrium concentrations. They're here, there are E-line values. So I sometimes call this the E-line, right? 
And so this is the E line values. You plug those numbers in. And so here they are plugged in. We do the math carefully. Remember to square things. And this is the number we get. So this is a reaction that somewhat favors the products because this number is, is going to be greater than 1. It's not much, much greater than 1, but it's a bit greater than 1. So it favors the products somewhat. All right, so that's the other way that we can find um, the equilibrium constant using stoichiometry.